Today's interview is one that I have been looking forward to bringing to you guys for probably about a year and a half now. <laughs> this is a big one. So we, our guest today is Dr. Patrick Porter. He's a PhD award-winning author and speaker, and he's the founder of BrainTap. So um, I'll say in the episode, but... <laughs> Even as a biohacking coach and a fan, uh, you know, biohacking, I use loosely. It's just health optimization is probably a better way of putting it, but it's ways that we can enhance our environment, both outside of us and within us for better health outcomes, soul outcomes even. And I, even as a coach of these things, sometimes I can be very resistant to a lot of the technologies out there because I'm just always like, I have so many things I can recommend to my clients. I'm always like, does this really make a difference? Is it really worth their time, their money, their energy, even learning about it, spending money on it? BrainTap is one of those things. So much so that I'm actually, I've got four headsets of BrainTap that I'm bringing to my retreat in Maui in May. Um, if this comes out in time, May 10th through 14th, there may still be time. We have a few rooms left at the time of recording this and it's going to be powerful beyond words in terms of tapping you into yourself. So if that speaks to you, uh, we're doing a lot of fun stuff for sure. Surfing, paddle boarding and learning how to shut coconuts and throw spears and hula and like all sorts of cool stuff like that. But there, we're really, really, really going to be tapping you into yourself through breath work, through uh, solo time out in nature, through some cool processes I'll be taking people through. So anyway, sorry, side note on that, but brain tap is going to be part of that. Um, I'm doing a biohacking buffet of the things that I really think make a big difference. We'll be doing cold plunging and um, several other things I won't get into, but brain tap is one of them. So brain tap is uh, basically a really incredible tool with so much incredible research. Wait till you hear what Dr. Porter has to say um, that helps you tune yourself back into yourself and helps your brain become more, more coherent, helps you be able to go into the states that we really need to be going into more as human beings. And they have, he, Dr. Porter has, I mean, this is life's work. It's like he has put his heart, soul, energy, everything into this. And I, when I heard Dr. Porter speak in an event, I was like, wow, okay, cool. I see you, man. Holy smokes. He is really, really impressive and really cares and has so much information to share. It's like there, he could never share it all in one podcast episode, but he shared so much incredible stuff. Um, you know, just he's been featured in everything, Wall Street Journal, People, Entrepreneur, Inc., ABC, NBC, you know, I mean, he's, he's amazing. It's amazing. And I'm um, honored to be able to share with you guys today a little bit more about what he has created. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Here is Dr. Patrick Porter. All right, Dr. Porter, I am so excited because, well, I've been listening to you a lot because I've got your brain tap headset. So it's a familiar voice I'm hearing right now. And um, just sharing with my audience, I heard you speak at Biohacking Congress in Vegas and I was just blown away. I like literally was that person, that podcaster that like cornered you as you were walking out of the room. I'm like, please come talk to my audience. This is so cool. Cause like, it's not just like, I will be honest. I'm very resistant to like biohacking devices. I am just kind of like, even though I do biohacking as a coach, it's just, it's a lot of like money plays and like stuff people don't really need. And I'm, I'm very skeptical, but like what I found in you when you were speaking is one, I can tell there's a whole deeper layer of just like getting it on a consciousness level that like I could see through the nuances of what you were saying. And, um, just a deep caring for like, if we're going to bring something to people, like let's make it actually matter. And so, um, yeah, brain tap. My kids have been using it. I've been using it. I got four of them. I'm bringing up to my upcoming retreat in Maui. And so I'd love if you could educate people on what brain tap is, why it matters. I bet there's a lot of people that are like, Oh, it's another freaking device. You know, it's let, like, let's get them. Can you let them know why brain tap is like, it's one of the few that I'm like, no, this is actually really freaking cool. Yeah. I think the main reason people need something like brain tap right now is everybody's so sympathetic right now. I mean, yeah. their fight or flights turned on. They're so stressed out. That's why if you ask them, hey, can you eat this way? Can you do this workout? Can you do this meditation? They're going, I'm too busy. I can't do any of that. Well, you know, they, no. my, my saying to them typically is if you can't do that now, then when are you going to have time to be sick? Because, you know, you've got to take time. You're there. It's kind of like the old commercial. You can pay us now. Or you can pay us later. Yeah, so it breaks my heart. most people know that, hey, if I eat nutritionally sound food, good food from nature, you know, that it doesn't have any ingredients in it, you know, that's the closer to nature you can. Of course, some things you can't avoid, but you want to, you know, 
Right. We know that right now we've been biohacked, right? We uh, sugar is on the right. rise. This is killing our brain. It's it's rising inflammation. So all of this is causing us to have a dysregulated brain. Yeah, Food is number one. Number two, you, and I always say nutrition is number one because you can't outthink a bad diet. So you got to get your diet right. Uh, yeah. But if you can't get your diet right, the next thing you can do is you start moving and breathing. You know, we all have friends that went out and they started doing some kind of physical exercise and they they were these negative Nellies. And then all of a sudden they become positive. Well, that's because your physiology feeds into your psychology. Yeah. But then the thing that most people are missing about the whole thing is brain fitness, because those first two will help your brain. But if you can do something like mindfulness, you know, like we were talking before we went on the air, you know, get out in nature, go for a walk in Japan, mm -hmm. they call this forest bathing. This mm -hmm. is going to adjust your neurophysiology and, and you have to have a break from whatever's going on. We, we crave it, but the yeah. problem is that most people don't know how to do it. In fact, when I've, when I've measured a, and we've been fortunate with our neurocheck equipment. We've measured over 30,000 brains over the last 10 years. And I can tell you, we only have a handful of people that really know how to meditate. And they think they are. And they even post online, I'm going to Theta. Well, I challenge anyone out there when we're at an event, come to our booth and I'll, I'll measure you before and after. I've, even, I've been to India. Only a handful of gurus were going there until we told them. Once we told the, the people that meditate, hey, this is Theta. Because it's it's almost like, um, you know, when you're you're talking a little bit about blindfold being blindfolded and trying to do squats or doing some, you know, yeah. you don't know where you're at in space and time because alpha and theta mm -hmm. are a timeless zone, this yeah. timeless place we don't know. So you get into meditation wow. and maybe you're there for two minutes and your brain starts telling you it's been thirty, you know, and so right. your your monkey mind takes over. Hey, the laundry's in, or I got to go pick up the kids, or you know this bills due, or hey, I need to put this PowerPoint together. Whatever's going on, your brain takes mm -hmm. over. And what we know is if you can use technology. So what we're doing, just so the audience knows, we've taken ancient traditions to make this modern technology. So the, all five of the sciences that are in BrainTap were really working well without, before I put them into BrainTap. So yeah. it's not like I didn't invent the space of uh, <clears throat> mindfulness. What I did was <laughs> I, 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 created, I created a way to easily get it done. Yeah, so right. when you think about uh, right. when people meditate, for instance, uh, they don't understand the, that like when somebody sees somebody meditating to a candle, that's actually doing something like brain tap because yeah. that candle is flickering at 10 hertz frequency. So yeah. our brain has these little cilia on the brain that is actually always measuring what our environment's doing. And then every 40 seconds by something called biophotaic exchange, meaning every time you have a cell division, every time that you make a movement, every time something changes in your environment, your body actually is adapting all the time. Now, mm -hmm. depending upon the food you consume, the mental stability you have, the physical fitness you have available, all of these things play into what shows up for you. So you need to have that downtime to prepare. You know, I always tell people, could you imagine watching your favorite television show and they never rehearsed? You know, it'd be crazy, right? It wouldn't, right. It wouldn't, be, a, it wouldn't be a good show because they'd make mistakes all the time. And people are wondering, why do I keep making all these mistakes in my life? Well, you never plan prepared in that mental space because yeah. that's where you do it. And, and athletes do this all the time, but, mm. uh, you know, for their sport, but then they forget to do it in their relationships, let's say, or they forget to do it right. in their personal life in some way. So as we look at things, brain tap is a, is a way to use light, sound and vibration to really delve into consciousness. Really the yeah. underlying reality of all things is consciousness. So, you know, one of the facts that when I was reading about it blew my mind, if and this just puts it into perspective for everyone out there. When, when I say I want to better a billion brains, and that's really the, the thought behind brain tap, mm -hmm. because we know they take rats, for instance, in laboratories. They know if one rat makes it through a maze, you cannot use that same maze anywhere at all in the world because all the other rats know the maze. So if rats share a consciousness yeah. like that, I mean, it's like yeah. we have a Wi-Fi network that we all share. So if we can... Think in terms when you're in this fanatic pace, everything's going on, you're stressed out, your bills are due, you know, everything that the, the American rat race really is yeah. what they call it. So yeah. when we, but if you step outside of that for a little bit, yeah. Yeah. do some breathing exercises, yeah. you know, close your eyes, let the light, the, the light exactly. too, by the way, it's coming in through the ears and the eyes. When people see that, they go, what's the lights in the ears for? Well, 
That's because our brain, every cell of our body has something called chromoforms. This is little batteries. So this little battery is absorbing light, sound, and vibration. That's why when you're working out, you might want to have loud music and you're going because that music actually drives ATP production, you know, and now if you don't I've like noticed. The music, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so all that means that we're going to have the ability to think we're going to be able to mm. respond. But the, the, the whole thing is that if we don't charge our batteries, yeah. they just, yeah. they just keep burning out, keep burning out. And if you've ever seen, if you never charge your iPod or your phone, it's going to go dead. The same thing's true with your cells. Yeah. So think of brain tap as a way to recharge the cells, especially those brain cells. All right. I'm going to address like the, the big time meditators. Okay. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'll hear people say things like, oh, you don't need that. I hear this with all sorts of things. I hear this with supplements. I hear this with that. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You don't, you don't need anything. <laughs> right. You don't really need anything, you know, except maybe some food every once in a while and right. some sleep, you know, but right. Um, the reason I like brain tap is this, because I work with people, uh, basically <laughs> I'll, I guess I'll kind of out myself of how I feel on the inside, but I feel like I take people from the rat race, from the ego, you know, no, no offense to anyone who's ever worked with me, but it's true. It's like, they're like, just, you know, wake up, go to work, whatever, like kind of disassociate from all my emotional stuff and like drink or whatever. And then like have all these problems in my life and repeat, you know, and I take people from there and bring them into themselves, bring them home to themselves, to their heart, the healing, you know, and, and the body too. And because I'm in that little space, I have found that it is so helpful to have anchors because if I take somebody who's living that life of just rush, 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 go, 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 blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, go sit out in nature for an hour every day in silence. Guess what they're not going to do? Because I can barely get people to meditate for 10 minutes when they just have to just like sit down. Like I have to create so many, um, I call them like rituals. So it's like, okay, we want like a space that you like to be in. Do you like to get your coffee going? What does that make you want to sit down and meditate? Do you like a comfy cushion? Do you like a little sound bowl? Like what is it that will draw you into that space where you will actually do it? And that's why I like brain tap because for the, for that, I mean, there's a lot of reasons I like brain tap, but just for that, like you take somebody in the busy rat race, they will, it's something they can do. They are busy in the doing and you're taking a doing and getting them in the being through something that they already know of. Like I can do this thing. It is, that is unbelievably helpful when you're working with people that are very much stuck in the doing all the time, but then there's more because the science is really freaking cool. And I was wondering if you could go on a little tirade about the research that you guys have done, because it's really amazing. <laughs> sure. And we, and we can make the research packet available for you to download from this podcast. Okay. Too. I'll, I'll send you that link. That'd be great. Um, but there's a few that I really love to talk about. One is people think that we're supposed to, when we age, lose our memory. Yeah. Well, this is counterintuitive to all of history. All the ancient traditions right. got Lies. The with the tribal elders. They didn't go, right. hey, young man, I'm going to teach you our tribal, you know, they went to the elders. So you, right. you, they have the wisdom. You know, the, people say knowledge is power. That's not true. Wisdom is power mm-hmm. because you got to know what to do with that knowledge. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's the elders. But what's happening now is we're we're really taking the elders and putting them aside and saying, hey, this is. And in, in it's, pro- it's mostly because people think they're going to fix their brain with a pill, a potion, or some kind of magic formula. The reality is we already have the magic formula. Mm. The brain needs energy, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so we have to feed the brain. We have to sleep. We have to, you know, do these things. So what brain tap does, we did a study with uh, women, 55, 65. They were all on the dementia scale. Hold on so one second. That- you did a study on women. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yes. that's unheard of. Yay. Yay for you guys. So, yeah. So um, Dr. Um, Kelly Miller wrote a book called Saving Your Brain, and he he posted the results in that book. And mm. we have the results too. But the uh, what he showed was, now you can get better results if you add more. So with a study, though, you can only do one thing or they'll say, hey, it yeah. was this or that. So yeah. if you add in the things I said before, nutrition and physical exercise, like when we went on and did the future studies where we had them doing planks and, you know, different things like this, building muscle, that mm-hmm. is a lot to do with your memory. You know, you've, you've got to work out the body. The body yeah. in, in a, a stagnant form will decay. 
because yeah. it's uh, it doesn't know what to do. It needs energy. It needs yes. a reason for being as well. So yeah. what we did with them was we said, okay, we're they went to their doctor. They were all diagnosed. We did them do the Cambridge Science Online Scoring Test, which is it mm-hmm. mirrors. Uh, basically gives you a protocol if they, or puts them into a spectrum and they were all in the dementia spectrum and they weren't Alzheimer's. So we didn't want to include those in the study, but these were all women that had cognitive decline. It was noticeable. It was so noticeable. In fact, that every one of them were told it's only going to get worse. They were in, of course, when you get diagnosed by our medical community, it's like getting one of those scarlet letters, you know, it's, it's totally. every time somebody opens up your medical record, it says it there. So yeah. we had them do brain tap three times a day And the main reason for this in the morning, which is the most important time for your sleep. Most people don't realize that. But if you wake up dysregulated and, and if you're wondering, gosh, I don't know if I have a dysregulated brain. Well, do you not function till you have coffee? If that's the case, then you probably have a dysregulated brain. You just slept all night. Why in the right. world would you need coffee right away? Right. Now, I'm not against coffee. I love coffee myself, but you should drink it a little later in the morning yeah, when you rich, when you need that lift or something. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so we had them do that morning session called SMR, sensory motor rhythm. This is the one as you get better looking and more intelligent with age, it's the one that atrophies. So if you're wondering why that happens, it's because that, that it's normal. It also has to do with your distributor system. So like in your case, helping people with balance and things like that, Mm -hmm. that's the brainwave. That's why morning is so important. Mm -hmm. Now in the afternoon, we had them do a reboot session. This is one we would have athletes do right after a workout because, you know, you just stressed Mm -hmm. out your body. If you, if you see your HRV, most people are now measuring that, that is actually a sign of your brain. Because your nervous system, uh, 70% of your nervous system is your brain. So it's a great way to measure your brain activity as HRV. Mm -hmm. And so we had them do a reboot session, one of our brain fitness sessions, which is memory, focus, concentration, all the things Mm -hmm. as if you were, it was, it's like our school program, but it's for everyday users and adults, not just, you don't have to be in school. It doesn't talk about taking tests and things like that. It's just learning and, and memorizing things and recalling because the truth is we all have a perfect memory. It's our recall system. So think of it like if you've ever had a computer go down and go, you take it to somebody to repair and you go, everything's on this. Can you get it for me? And they go, you know what? The file allocation table's rotten or or something's wrong with it. I can't get to it. Right. It's in there. And they know how to fix it. Your brain knows how to fix it. Mm -hmm. So then what we did at night, when you go to sleep, what happens to people, what we found with this dysregulated brain is at night, if you didn't stay balanced during the day, at Mm -hmm. night, it really goes off. So now Mm -hmm. you actually have a cortisol cortisol response, neoprenephrine, which is supposed to happen in the morning, happens at night. I'm seeing this so much now too, when we measure PM cortisol, it's starting to become more common. They're just completely backwards on their cortisol release. They wake up low. That's not good. You don't want to wake up low cortisol. You have no energy. You can't focus. And then nighttime, they're like, yep, it's becoming increasingly common. Yeah. So that's what, that's what we've been finding too. And so Mm -hmm. at night you do the Delta sessions, which basically Mm -hmm. the morning session, the afternoon in the evening sessions, I should say before bed, they take no additional time. You just set your alarm for 10 minutes earlier if if you need an alarm, and then you just put it on right before you go to sleep. So Mm -hmm. you're going to get those two in the middle of the day is going to be the reboot. What we found after six weeks was a 39% neuroplastic change. Now, what neuroplasticity means is your capacity to do work. So as we age, you you probably noticed in some of the aging population, unfortunately, you give them too many things to think about. They stress out and they say, hey, stop, wait a minute. I can't hold all that in my brain anymore when they used to be able to do that, you know, or they'll say I'm having a senior moment, which isn't necessarily true, but it it happens. Mm -hmm. So part of the part of the equation is to get them to do these mental fitness protocols. Now, what we ha- what happened with this 39% neuroplastic change when they went back to their doctor we already had them take the test we already knew they were no longer on the spectrum they 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 were focused they did really well they they even mentioned they go i don't know what's going on i seem to have more balance i need to you know cuz we did tests with the balance tracker to show the just improving smr you do that their doctors were amazed. Every one of their doctors said, if you could have came here like this six weeks ago, I'd have never diagnosed you. And they said, well, can you take the diagnosis away? No. Once you're diagnosed and they're like, what? The nervous system changes every 72 hours. So they're giving you a diagnosis downstream that can be fixed. If you fix what's happening downstream, Mm -hmm. you can fix Mm -hmm. what's happening in the moment. And so that that was, that was an incredible study. Now that study is in a bigger study right now in Mm -hmm. Brazil. 
and also in uh, Seminole College. And Seminole College is one of our research partners. If, if anyone's in Florida in that area, you can look up their website. We, they, we actually have a page for BrainTap there because we help their girls golfers. These were the female golfers. Okay. And we, we went in there three years in a row now, national champions. Oh, wow. And so uh, these are elite athletes, right? Yeah. They, they know how to golf. And golfing really uh, is an alpha uh, alpha brainwave program, because even though golf takes four and a half hours to play 18 holes, you're really only playing for five minutes, you know, because you, the swinging of the club is, you know, 20 seconds mm. or less, mm. you know, so you're, it's all about what do you do during those peak moments of performance? And so we increased their alpha score by 90%. But my most proud 90? moment was a year ago, they noticed that the female golf team had the highest GPA in the school. So wow. now we're in the middle of doing a full school wide uh, Very cool. program. And this is just with the app. And we're seeing, we're seeing how we can influence these college students. Cause there's a lot of stress, you know, when you're in college yeah. and, and you have to learn and do these things. So that's really exciting. And we have another test going on right now. And I don't know why all these, uh, I think uh, females in general are more open to change, <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> when we, we have the Northeastern women's hockey team a year ago mm. we took them to the frozen four with just using the app this wow. year they all have the headsets so i'm my fingers mm. are crossed they're going to win the national championship wow so okay we're Let's, doing all sorts of studies like that that's a question i really wanted to ask you this too because i don't know exactly like because in case you guys don't know there's a obviously he's referencing there's a headset and it has lights it has like a little visor that comes in front of your eyes and there's lights and then there's lights in your ears and then there's an app that goes with it and there's you know all different types of meditations if you will and i was curious like um what so can you explain the difference between just having the app and then having the headset with the app right with the so first of all let me explain you're hearing right now 25,000 pieces of information every second but you're only acting on 40 of them. So we have to do some kind of disruptive sound that's going to influence brain activity because the brain is very good at omitting things. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just from your ex, right. you know, when they're saying something, you know, the, the brain will learn how to silence people or they go, you're not listening to me. And then they're right there. The reality is that we don't listen to everything. So we right. have very specific cortical responses. So with that in mind, keep that in mind. Now imagine Somebody asks you to go to a party. You go, I don't really want to go. I'm not feeling up to it. They go, please come. I need, I need a plus one. So you, you go, you're standing there. And all of a sudden they start playing all your favorite music from your high school days. And so pretty soon they look over and you're dancing, you know, you're doing your thing. And they go, I thought you didn't want to be there. Well, that's because those chromoforms don't just absorb light. They absorb frequency, light, and sound. So when your cells got full of energy, you had to move. Just like uh, when you see uh, someone who's stimming, mm. like who has um, mm. autism or something, yeah. when their body gets too much energy, they start stimming. We do that, but usually we start dancing or we start moving. Wow. You know, we, we can't sit still. You know, your feet want to move because you want to use that energy. Wow. I never so, thought about it like that. So, so what we're doing when it's just sound alone, uh, one of our studies we did with in Australia with coal miners. These were these were people that never see the light of day. Holy I mean, cow. That's so cool. You did that. They're always in the dark. So mm. one group used just the app. One group used the headset. Mm. The group that used the headset got 70% sleep improvement in third, in actually 16 days. The, the group that didn't use the headset, but just used the app alone was six weeks. So it can still work. It just takes a little bit longer and you got to do a little bit more. Now, the okay. reason that the light is so important, and we, we've shown this on EEG in front of large groups before, but as soon as you close your eyes to meditate, 30% or more of your brain shuts down. Think of your brain as the biggest gas hog, you know, on the it street. Is. And anytime yeah. the brain can shut down its, its use of energy, it's going to do that. Right. So as soon as you close your eyes, all the optic circuits go down. Now, what's important about that is those optic circuits should stay open. Like if you, if you see, for instance, a Buddhist adept, or somebody who's meditating, like when we go to India and we put them on the EG when we're at Ames Institute, when you get a real heavy duty meditator, like somebody who's been meditating for 20, 30 years, and you know they start chanting or humming, their brain goes into high gamma, it wakes up. It's not asleep at all, but they look like they're sleeping. You know, they're, they're mm -hmm. I always tell people your body's asleep, but your mind's awake. 
that's when you know you're in a hyper state. And it doesn't mean you're going to remember everything. You know, a lot of times people don't remember it because in these in these hyper states of uh, theta or in these hyper states of gamma, you create your own natural analgesia, which means that your body, that's why it's so good for pain in, in the, the study that Aww. we're doing with um, and I just want to mention this because the study we're doing in Brazil that finalized three different pharmaceutical studies. I don't know if I mentioned this when you heard me speak because it's just finalizing. And next month, I'm actually going mm-hmm. to Brazil to oh, the universities cool. to collect all the data. Mm-hmm. We beat opioids in three different studies with women with fibromyalgia. There wow. were over a thousand people in the study. Oh, so wow. we get to use that data, hey. graduate students collecting all that data, but the human brain can is the world's greatest pharmacy really. It can release 30,000 different neurochemicals. So what we showed was with the app alone, now I told him, I said, we should do it with the headset, but I don't want to donate a thousand headsets. It's easier just to give them the app and they all have phones. So we're going to do a smaller group study just Mm -hmm. to show how much better the headset works. But we know the app works. The the biggest difference is what we're doing. A lot of people know about binaurals, right? They'll listen to them and they'll find them everywhere. We use not only binaurals, we use isochronic tones. And we also, in their my binaurals and my isochronic tones that I've created over the years since mm. the 80s. Mm. In the, so in the, in the, and my dad used it when I was growing up in the 70s. It was called the Silva method. And mm. he was an instructor. So we would go every other weekend, help him set up. And this sound sounds really weird. It sounds like there's no way your brain's going to go anywhere. Now, I buried that in the, in the algorithm, because your brain is, at, like I said, 25,000 pieces of information. It's it's categorizing and organizing. Every one of our 1,800 recorded sessions have a different encoding because the brain's going to try to guess it. It's kind of like learning a dance move, and then you throw in a different dance move. They go, hey, what just happened? I thought I knew it. We right. need to keep doing that because the brain, really our whole nervous system, and you know this from working out, you got to challenge the muscles. you got to challenge the neuro- neurology. If you don't right. challenge it, you don't grow. So I love right. when people say, I don't want any stress. You go, you don't want to grow. There's only one time in your life when you don't have any stress and it only lasts a brief second. It's right before death. You know, so you you don't want that. So th- right. the biggest difference between the two is one drives energy into the brain and you need energy. Like uh, I'll put this in perspective. When, when uh, you think about yoga, right? People think about yoga and Tai Chi And all they do is the exercises and they don't do the corpse pose or the yoga nidra Mm. afterwards or do this Mm. quiet meditation after Tai Chi. Well, any master will tell you you're missing out on the most important part of that workout because that's when you build the neuroplasticity is during the recovery time. Right. Even when, like when we work with Kansas City Sport, who's a professional soccer team, we put in a 20 station brain tapping room. And we had to show them because these are, you know, these are professional athletes. They have attitude, right? They, they think I don't need that. And then what we did was we measured them one day doing it on their own, showing where they were in four hours, which of course, if you follow sports, you know, there should be back to their baseline HRV, which they all were, except for a couple that had a beer in those. And they realized one beer can throw you off for 12 hours. So, you know, the, and these are, you know, that one beer means it makes a difference to these world-class athletes. So, For you sure. know, they thought they were just coming down. It was no problem. But I said, it's the sugar, really, in the in other, the way the body operates. But what we showed them was they can get mm-hmm. that, they can get better recovery in 20 minutes right after doing brain tap. I mean, right after their practice, do brain tap. And so we showed them that with our neuro check. Then they started using it. Then they started a policy. You can't leave the facility after a workout without doing your brain tap, because that's when you're going to build the recovery. I think every gym should have that because when people go, why aren't people going to the gym? Well, they're not getting the gains because they think it's all about just lifting weights or running really hard and burning out your your nervous system. The reality is you have to down-regulate. If you just leave that gym and go right out to your stress, the nervous system has no way to retrain. And that's think, really what you're doing. I think that's one of the little nuances I've noticed that I do differently than other people that I think that has really helped me build muscle and stay lean and all of that is like, yeah, people might see me going beast mode in the gym when I'm sharing a little workout or whatever. But what they don't see is when I get done, I am so proactive about bringing myself back down into the parasympathetic through breath through calm, through silence, through just everything comes back down. And I spend the rest of my day in a lot of calm. Like I refuse to be frenzied. I've lived that life. It sucks. Everything is hard. So like 
besides that short little stimulus of like, yeah, I love it. It's fun. You know, it's, I'm, I'm going for it after that. It's calm all day, prioritize sleep like crazy. So I just have to, you know, vouch for that. And and I'm going to definitely try that since I've got my headsets and my app. Um, I, I have one more question for you on recovery type stuff. Um, this is very selfish. Uh, sorry guys, bear with me, but maybe we'll find out something cool. So I've got a cold plunge and a Therasage, uh, infrared sauna. So, it, you know, my head doesn't go in there. So I've been using, I've been doing cold plunge into the sauna with brain tap. Do you think that's a good Oh yeah. Strategy? Awesome. I okay. do that every morning actually. Okay. That's my routine. You can't okay, have cool. That. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really good. In fact, I'm I'm actually uh, next week I get to go to Arizona State University where my um, a professor friend of mine actually uh, does the forge, the cold plunge, and we're yeah. going to do some metabolic testing with the and, nice. uh, some brain stuff with that. So oh, I get to cool. go and play with some. They have the mass spectrometer, so we can go in there and find out at a cellular level what's happening. And, oh uh, man, there's some other cool things. I love going to those labs and just seeing the toys and in playing with them. So, and, but he's really big into the cold. He's the one who put me through the cold plunge the first time and uh, tricked me into doing it for five minutes when I thought I was only doing it for three. So, you know, the, the, <laughs> it's, it's really good. I, I, we are, I was just at cryocon and that was a really mm. great event there in uh, Dallas. So mm. uh, learned a lot more about cold therapy as well. So I think there's a lot of benefit there. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. One other thing on this whole, like, would you say 25,000, 20,000, typically the brain, I remember you saying this, I mean, guess, gosh, this was probably back in like 2021. Maybe I, I saw you in Vegas at that conference. You were saying like, when we look at screens, it's way more, is that correct? Oh yeah. I mean, our brain, I mean, most people have seen the movie like rain man where Dustin Hoffman, they drop toothpicks on the ground and he says a yeah. thousand one hundred and forty seven or whatever. Right. Uh, well, our brains are also on this pixel screen that I'm looking at these million pixels. My mm -hmm. brain is trying to figure out and right. guess because our brain is a predictive machine. It's trying to predict the future all the time mm -hmm. because we only process 20% of the physical world with our eyes. The other 80% is rendered or we make it up. And how we know that is in neuroscience, we bring in 10,000 pieces of information every second. So imagine that all this information is coming in, but our brain receives 10 million pieces of information from our eyes. Wow. So where did that other information go? Right, it's it's right. our brain is, is rendering this reality. That's why when we, you know, if you're at the gym or you're at home and you're looking for something and somebody else knows it's there, like salt shaker at home or something, and they go, it's right there in the counter. No, it isn't. And then you argue back and forth. Finally, they come out and they show you the salt shaker. Uh, in psychology, they, we call that a blind spot or a stictoma. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't see this in and another with a stick in your eye. That's where it came from. But we have these blind spots because we don't render everything. Mm -hmm. And the tireder we are, the more stressed we are, the more anxious we are, the more depressed we are. Your physiology plays a lot. Think of your body like an antenna. You know, if, if I was to ask you to play a role for me of a depressed person, you would have to roll your shoulders forward, yeah. droop your head and say, poor me or some other mantra that, right. that supports that behavior. Now, if you if you pretended every morning when you woke up that you won the lottery because you did, I mean, you are the genetic successor to every gene splice, every entity between you and the Big Bang. You're here by some divine appointment. There's no accident. There's no happenstance. You have something inside you. Those of you that are listening, you have something inside you that the universe is waiting to come out. It's yeah. not here yet. It's, you know, I, I love, I just got a cartoon that somebody just sent it to me. It was really funny. It was a, it was a caterpillar in a, in a butterfly and they're having dinner and the caterpillar says, you've changed. And the butterfly says, you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. You know, and, mm -hmm. and that's really the truth. I mean, most people think, oh, I want to be the same. You know, I would love to have my high school hairline, but that's not the case. You know, I got this hairdo, yeah. you know, God had different plans for my hair, yeah. you know, so th that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things we can change and certain things we can't. And that's why, like, for alcoholics, especially, or people with addiction, they need to understand the difference because mm -hmm. all unhappiness stems from unfavorable comparisons. Yeah. And if you're not, if you're not looking at, if you're looking at yourself and compared to someone else, then that's a, you're not that other person, right. you know, and Just also if you're trying to love. teach a dog to climb trees, they're never going to be good at that. 
you know, so you got to figure out what is your skill set? Everyone has a certain talent and skill yeah. and it, yeah. it first has to start. That's what that quietness is all about. I'm sure that when you're, when you're doing your quiet time and you're doing your down, you're getting a lot of inspiration. You're so getting much. a lot of ideas of how to Everything. help your clients, all that. That's when the brain goes to work. You know, yep. other than that, it's, yep. it's, it's trying to keep you alive, you know, other, right. so you're giving it a chance to tap into all that creativity. Speaking of that, um, for, could you, since you have such a great understanding, could you explain the different brain wave states? Cause I know people hear this all the time and they're like, I don't know. I hear theta and alpha, yeah. and I don't know what any of it means. <laughs> okay. So first of all, every brain wave state is important and there's not a bad guy or a good guy. It's just, what do you do during these states? So I'll, I'll mention mm-hmm. what they are and then what the brain. So think of it like a gear shifter. If I'm in the gym working out, I'm going to want to have about 45% beta, 30% alpha. That's also true with anything you're doing that needs conscious awareness that you need to be, you know, focused on. Mm -hmm. Now, beta, we call this the reactionary mind, because when you get into this mindset, it's too much of it, you get locked into programming. You know, we've all had the experience when we're with a family member that'll take us back, we go off and then we go, oh man, I wish I would have treated them differently or said something differently. But you can at the time. You're it's almost like you're locked into this neurological repeat. And wow. if they know your parents, they'll say, they might even say, You're acting like your mother, you're acting like your father. Because we learn those things from mom and dad, brothers and wow. sisters, preachers and teachers, and they get locked into beta. So beta is when we go on default. In psychology, there's a saying that we're 20, 25% of the time we're unconscious, which means if you think about your day certain amount of your day, you're not aware of it, like driving across town and you know, you made it, but maybe you're singing in the car, whatever. And you're just having a good time. You realize, wow, I'm home. That didn't take very long. And other times you're driving home. It seems like it takes forever from the same location. Mm -hmm. That's when you're in beta. Now, when you're in alpha time is suspended. Alpha is a creative state. So when you're doing something you love, this is why Einstein said, hey, if you're talking to a beautiful woman for an hour, it seems like a minute. If you're sitting on a hot stove for a minute, it seems like an hour, you know, because at this state of alpha, that's where all your creativity comes. It's Mm -hmm. also where your speaking comes from. When we've done studies with autistic Mm -hmm. children, as soon as we got them up to 23 percent alpha, 90 percent of them have begun to speak. So think of these brainwaves like Wi-Fi networks that are healthy. You know, they're they're Mm -hmm. telling our body. And by the way, the National Institute of Health is now saying that we have a biosphere. They're now agreeing that we are energy beings. It's right in their literature. We're not just physical beings. We are physical as part of it, of course, but we also have this energy system that tells people what to do. Or we're all like (laughs) those of us stepped in are like, that's great, guys. Like (laughs) (laughs) so in the in the in the process now. So theta's there now between. Beta and and alpha, there's a brainwave pattern called SMR, sensory motor rhythm. It's a very small, it's between, uh, usually between 11 and 13 cycles per second, for those that are really looking at the numbers. And that's the one that has to do with our recall system and really activates our hippocampus. So Mm -hmm. when you think about, the reason we can't remember things when we're stressed out is lack of blood flow. Lack of blood flow. Think about working out and you didn't have the same blood flow to your muscles. You wouldn't build those muscles. No. You know, so that's why when I wrote the article, Mind, my, the Mind Muscle Connection, and we have a whole program for that that I did with Iron Man in Brain Tap. It's all about when you're relaxed lifting, you actually have more acetylcholine at the muscle junction, which means oh. you can grow more muscle. Yeah. You know, those guys that more are all coordinated. stressed out and doing it, you don't yeah. build as much. So in beta, by the way, for those that don't know it, that's dopamine. That's why we have all dopamine. When dopamine is a is an adjective, and it's it's not the act of doing something, it's the act, it's the thought of doing something that gives you mm-hmm. dopamine. So uh, I tell people it's kind of like when you're in college and you're getting ready to go out. You you have all these big plans and you're all you're fantasizing how it's going to go. Right. You're going to meet whoever, and then you get to the bar and you go, oh, this isn't what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Maybe it was, yeah. you know, but most people, it's going to be a disappointment because your expectations are so high that no way anything could live up to that unless you're in Hollywood, you know, and they're scripting it. Wow. So, so maybe it, people do all these, like I call it dangling carrot syndrome of like yep. better, better, better. Cause it's, it, it will produce dopamine when you're fantasizing about that. Yes. Wow. Fascinating. Yep. And it's, it's not the act of doing because the act of doing is a letdown. Right. That's why they wow. keep doing it. It's, it's the, it's the Ooh. premeditation of it that, but that that uh, dumps the dopamine into the system. Wow. And people get, you know, that's why I think 
these computer games are just silly. Like they they eat gummies or whatever on the, on the screen, and people are their marriages are breaking up because right. the guy won't stop playing the stupid game on his phone. It's like, but they're getting ding 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 ding. They're getting all these little rewards, these dopamine hits, yeah. and they become addicted to it. And they wow. they call that repatterning. So when you know your brain gets repatterned. So now we have the three brain waves I just talked about. But if you drop down below alpha, there's a very small brain wave between four and seven cycles per second called theta. Now, most people never enter into theta on a conscious level. It's always happening when you're going to sleep or when you're waking up, you go okay. through cycles when you sleep. I call this the inventive mind because every inventor that I've ever researched mm -hmm. always had these kind of catnap scenarios where they had mm -hmm. a problem in their, in their lab and they'd go to sleep and they'd wake up with this solution. Because wow. the, the computer brain, if you will, never sleeps. It's always trying to figure things out. That's why wow. it's so important. I can't stress this enough that you don't watch the news before going to sleep oh, because man. that yeah. basically embeds all that negativity. You know, if you're right. too happy, then watch the news. You know, if you, if you don't <laughs> want to be depressed or anxious, then watch it earlier in the day. If you really need to know what's going on, you know, and you're not going to hear what's going on there because they're yeah, going to tell you yeah. they're not, they're no longer producing the news. I mean, they're producing the news. I should say they're not reporting the news. There's a big difference and they're scaring yeah. the heck out of everybody. And that's right. the worst thing for the brain before sleep. But the one below theta, theta is a, is a place that if, if you get into it, you release what's called GABA. GABA mm -hmm. before 2020 was the most was the most researched neurotransmitter mm. because they believed that if they could synthesize GABA, then they could have a sleeping pill because mm. GABA is a precursor to DMT. It creates dreaming. So when you're doing these things, what happens is our brain produces just by going in through one brain tap session. You're talking about dumping between 30 and $60,000 worth of neurochemicals into your system because your body creates them. That's what it does. And we can track that. And that's what attracted the Brazilian researchers was mm. that, that, that we could do that. So when you drop into Delta, which is sleep, most people don't realize we have a glialymphomic system. And if you're an exercise physiologist out there watching this or something, then you probably know that anywhere there's a blood vessel, there's a lymph vessel, and that's what carries the trash out, right? Mm -hmm. So if, but it, they didn't before 2015, there was no glialymphomic system. There was, but they didn't know where it was because they never thought to look at the lymph system while somebody slept. But when you reach these level four, that's why it's so important if you have a bio strap, a whoop or, or a ring, when you're looking at your deep sleep, you'll see your sleep score will accelerate upward the more deep sleep you have mm -hmm. because we're detoxing the brain at that point. Mm -hmm. So Delta, now what we're seeing is a, as a brain profile, about, I would say 90% of the people that we read have over 70% delta when they're awake. What this means, if they're, mm -hmm. you, they probably talk to you when they hire you, they go, I'm just tired. I go home, I hit this couch. Next thing I know, it's dinner. I wake up, I make dinner. I go back to the couch, I pass out. I rinse and repeat. It's like pulling a parachute, you know, like the runners that put the parachutes behind them. We used to do that yeah. in track when I was in college. And, you know, just to give us more resistance. Mm -hmm. Well, these people have this resistance every day. Mm -hmm. Because Delta is not supposed to be that active. Delta should only be, and by the way, Theta should be right around 10% as well. But Delta should be below 10. Mm -hmm. If it's above 10%, it's going to have a drag on the system. Mm -hmm. Now, the one that is becoming so famous right now is Gamma. Because we're now finding with uh, psilocybin and DMT mm -hmm. and all of these other uh, mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals. And in fact, I've, I've got to answer David Rosenthal. We're doing a study with uh, psilocybin and brain tap. Oh, you are? A, I'm, yeah. so I'm a huge lover of psilocybin, so this yeah. is really cool for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, some people, it's too much stimulant. I mean, it's too, it's, it's almost like a DMT trip when they do brain tap with the psilocybin. Uh, but uh, what we did was the gamma series, we mapped Note people. To self. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So I love it. But, you know, wow. some people don't. The, um, but in the, what we found was that some people didn't want to do a psilocybin. So I mapped the brains of people doing a psilocybin and I created the gamma series. And people are reporting back they're having a psilocybin trips without a psilocybin. Oh, wow. So if you've done it before, do some of the gamma series. Like okay, the I will. Series. There's, there's probably 60 sessions that say gamma. Okay. And we've been playing around with them because what we find is as we age too, gamma is like the bass drum of the brain. So imagine a marching band without a bass drum, everything would go out of 
whack. Yeah. So that's why that 40 hertz frequency. Mm. Now, what we do is we take you all the way up actually to 85 hertz. Uh, it's training. So you can start with number one and go through nice. the sophitio okay. frequencies and you can get up and because we've mapped people's brains over 100 when they meditated with the psilocybin. It, wow. that, and that's the, almost exactly what happens to these Buddhists when they meditate. The only wow. difference is the Buddhists know where they're going. These meditators, when they're doing a psilocybin, it's just basically you're being taken on a trip and it's pretty right. incredible, you know, and, wow. and I, I do believe that, um, you know, these plant-based medicines are revolutionizing the way people think about who they are yeah, they and my their life. stresses simply totally. melt away. Wow, man, you guys have so much going on. I, I, you're like, I can tell you, you have so much to share that it's like impossible to get it all out there. Um, okay. In terms of, um, like the, the direction that you see people going, if they're going to use brain tap for like, let's say they are, I guess some people are using it for just optimization like me. Right. And then you have some people using it for healing, like the dementia and stuff like that. Um, are there any other areas that you see brain tap go? I mean, we've got this yeah. whole like psychedelic vision state, you know, what are some other applications for brain tap? Well, with, uh, like, in, with our doctors, we have 3000 clinics out there using brain tap. Oh, wow. And, uh, so we have a clinical program and most of them do a weight loss program because, uh, hmm out there in the world, people think it, it is about food, but it's also, it's not always what you're eating, but what's eating you. One stressful event, your liver will produce as much sugar as a candy bar. So if you're the person that says, I don't eat any sweets, I can't believe I'm overweight, but they're, they're always nervous. They're always upset. Yeah. Never, dumps they glycogen down like crazy. Right. So the body will produce, there used to be a time we didn't have candy bars. You know, we didn't have sugar everywhere, but our body still produced it. We don't need, you know, uh, we, there are certain things we do need to put into our diet, but sugar isn't one of them, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's why a good friend of mine wrote the book, get off your sugar. And he talked about how brain tap helped him get off of it in, mm. in the book. But the, the reality is that that's probably the biggest neurotoxin that's out there yeah. right now. So we help people get off. And the other thing is drinking uh, sugar water, you know, soda. You know, the, that's probably the, if you're going to quit one thing besides C cigarettes, that would right. be it. You know, if you're I smoking, you know, we call these landmines, you know, and right. I always tell people, if you're wondering, how do you do it? What I say is, okay, if you want to have a coffee uh, during the middle of the day, or you want to have a soda in the middle of the day, then let's say it's a 12 ounce, whatever, then drink 36 ounces of water first yeah. and then drink your soda or your other thing. Cause that'll get you back to normal. You right. know, you, you have to flush it out. And usually by the time when they start doing that, they might do it every once in a while, but then they go, I don't need that water anymore because they need mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. and we're hydrogen. We break up the hydrogen bonds in water and we get energy from it. But yeah. if you're so used to having the easy way of just mainlining sugar into the system, you know, the body, has, it will take a, a couple of weeks to, to break that pattern. And that's why, mm -hmm. uh, what, what I, what we always recommend is taking some, uh, antibiotic, I'm not antibiotics, the uh, <laughs> probiotics, I'm sorry, not antibiotics, probiotics, you know, when you, when, yeah. because you're, you are over 50%, not you, you're not human, uh, yeah, I you're know. bugs, you know, <laughs> so we have to train our bugs, you know, yes. and those bugs break down our food. They help metabolize and digest everything we're doing. And we want friendly flora you know, yes. I even interviewed a person who has something called bum biotics, which is another way to get them in. You know, it's, it's yeah. a suppository that does it. But, you know, there's a lot of oral ones you can do now. Yeah. It used to be they were almost like kept in cryo freeze and you couldn't do anything with them. But now they carry and coat them so you can, they get into your system and work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use a lot of the microbiome lab spore based probiotics. And yeah, I, I'm, I've been pretty deep dive on the microbiome and stool testing with my clients. And wow, there we, you know, we have a lot to learn. So, but we have learned a lot and your gut bugs control so much of your reality. It's not even funny. Like it is crazy how much easier it can be to lose weight. Once you get that done, the, your brain inflammation, all that stuff. So I love that you guys are on that too. Of course you are. Um, okay. So in terms of what's in the app, I mean, there's so much in the app. <laughs> like you, you guys, it's, this is not going to disappoint. It's not like there's only like five minutes. I mean, there are, how many are in there? Do we have you know? over 2,400 now, and I'm always creating more. I I'm, I'm just finishing up a whole program called overcoming overwhelm because people feel so overwhelmed right now. There's eight yeah. of those already on the app, but mm -hmm. there's going to be 26 of those. Mm -hmm. And they're all different life programs, you know, that people play, you know, really uh, 
Dennis Waitley said it a long time ago. He said, our subconscious, we build our subconscious, then our subconscious builds us. So right. we have to go back and inter- interrupt that program. I mean, yes. it works great when you're younger. I love people that say, I never had a problem until I was 29 or 35. And I go, well, that's when your body said, you know, we can't keep borrowing against the future. You know, right. you've got to make some investment in mm-hmm. today so you can have a better tomorrow. You know, mm-hmm. you, the old saying, you should live your life as if you're going to live forever, but mm-hmm. plan it as if you're going to die tomorrow. You know, so, you know, you want to bring all the joy, all the love, all the whatever into your everyday experience, but you need to plan on this body being around, you know, you don't yeah. want to be 90 and not knowing who you are or 80. Right. And not knowing right. You know? Tap in, you know, and that's brain tap, like tap in, tap in, tap in. Yeah. And you're, yeah, I understand that you're very much like me. It's like, let's honor the ancient wisdom and bring in the modern and, and create things that people actually do. You know, not everybody's going to go sit in the Himalayan mountains and, and meditate with monks. Like not, no, it's just not going to happen. So like, how do we help it happen for people, you know, and let's honor the ancient and what's coming. That is, to me, that is the most aligned way of thinking. We honor the elders. We honor the wisdom. And like, I respect my kids. I got four kids. I'm like, they have double the DNA that I got. Of course, I'm going (laughs) to listen to some of their perspectives, you know? So I see you guys doing that blending the ancient and modern. And the last question I have for you, um, protocols, like what would be the, you know, Dr. Porter way, you know, some cool ways to use brain tap, like morning, evening, you yeah. know, like what we, we actually have in the app, if they download it with your, with your link, you're going to share, um, mm-hmm. they can see the quick start guide. That's the one we use for most research. It has a okay. morning session. It has an afternoon session. It has an evening session. And I recommend everyone do the morning sessions and the even in the sleep sessions for the first 21 days anyway. Okay. Uh, personally, I sleep really well and mm-hmm. I just do some breathing exercises before I go to sleep. I don't use it unless I'm on the road. Yeah. And, and, you know, or if I just got in really late, I know I only going to get four hours sleep. I'll use the brain tap to kind of mm-hmm. hack the sleep. But mm-hmm. uh, if you, if you need to use, if you're not sleeping well, you need to continue doing the sleep one. But if you can just do one session, at least once a day after that, and just pick out, you can go into the search feature. Let's say you're going to play golf today. Just put in golf. We have over 25 sessions on golf. Let's say you're going to meet your, your, your girlfriends, and you're going to do some kind of creative thing, go into, listen to enter the uh, journey into the creativity zone. You know, if you're going to write, we have ones for writing even. Uh, you know, we have ones for public speaking, if you're going to do that. So I always tell people just use that and do something different Mm -hmm. all the time because the brain needs to be challenged. I love that. Okay, cool. And then you guys have been so generous to offer a hundred dollars off. Um, so that's always on my website, guys, on terragarrison.com on my discounts page, but we'll link that below too for the headset, right? So it's hundred dollars off the headset, which I love the headset. It's cool. My son has one in his room, you know, he's 15 years old. Like he, I think he, he it's, he's really gotten into meditation and cold therapy and all that stuff. And it's like, it's a cool thing to introduce your kids to as well. And they need it because they are just like being hammered with, overwhelm, like brain overwhelm all the time from their screens, even at school to if they have phones to, you know, they are just, I I feel like kids are sitting ducks right now. So I love having that for my teenagers, you know, to like bring them back into center. So yeah, highly recommend it. And thank you for that. And thank you for taking the time and coming on today. Anything, anything else you want to tell anyone about or guide them towards, or. I think the main thing that I like to tell people is don't, don't believe what other people are telling you about yourself. Nobody has the right to define you. You are a unique point of perspective of the infinite. So figure that out. Do your session. Unlock your potential. You know, and this is what the time we're talking about. When you tap in, that's what we're talking about. Tap into the infinite. It's within you right now. That power is within you. So go out and make that change. Start small. And you'll notice that with those small changes over the course of a year, you're going to be a totally different person, mm-hmm. the person that you were designed to be, not mm-hmm. the person that other people told you to be yes. or that you were representing. Yes. I always say you are your own guru. No one can trump. I tell my clients, I'm like, I, I never come before your own intuition for yourself ever. You know, I have some cool perspectives because I'm pretty nerdy, but I never trump your inner voice ever, you know? And so I love that. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for doing the work that you do. Like seriously, like so much love from all of us. You're like, you're crushing it. You guys are doing big work and we really appreciate it. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for coming and sharing with us today. 
All right. Well, thanks for having me. And we're out there to better billion brains and you're now part of it. And if you're listening, it's your brain we're talking to. So let's get it. Let's get it on board. Thank you. Thank you.